shout it so that those listening to this message wherever will know you are not playing say heaven is real hell is real, hell is real. hallelujah now i think it was last week we were talking with our daddy prof and he was just sharing with me a few concerns little did he know that that was the area that god had been speaking to me to preach on um there have been many books and tapes right now flying around is that true about different people chinese people nigerians and all kinds of people who went to heaven came back went to hell and brought back messages gospels doctrines packages deliveries that were perceived to have been received from god or angels or saints of old some of them met with all kinds of people some of them were permitted to go into ages to come or ages past this night we are going to be examining it hallelujah this is part one so i'm just going to be buttressing on the reality of heaven and hell this is a message you must listen to if you don't like this kind of messages sorry for you you know god knows how to get you you now took the communion and then he said now sit down and listen hallelujah there are many words in scripture that were translated hell um i'll just mention four of them sheol is number one s h e o l means the pit this will be very fast shell means a pit number 16 verse 33 and then job 17 16 you can find where this word was used number 16 33 we're not reading it we have to rush there's a lot to talk about job 17 verse 16 number two hades it's one of the words that were used the place of the dead it was also interchanged for the word grave Hades for instance we see in 2nd Chronicles 15 verse 5 it says O death where is thy sting O grave that word here is Hades the place of the dead hallelujah are you still writing number 3 Tartarus T-A-R-T-A-R-O-S Tartarus means a place of eternal torment let's have this one projected if we can second peter 2 verse 4 tartarus one of the words translated it means a place of eternal torment hallelujah a place of eternal torment the fourth is gehenna G E H E N N A G E H E N N A a place of everlasting torment okay let's look at second peter 2 verse 4 he said for if god spared not the angels that sin but cast them down to the word hell there is the word tartarus hallelujah the place of torment he said he delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment hallelujah very very important what is hell hell is a place of torment for those who are lost and those who die unsaved hell is a place of torment for the lost it's very important i want you to follow me i'm building on something hell is a place of torment when jesus walked upon the earth jesus talked more about hell than he did about heaven hallelujah we are going to examine one of the stories that jesus brought forth i want you to know that hell is a place of torment people have watered it down with our rat race of looking for success 
statistic tells us i don't know if it's still current that eight people die every second everybody look up instrument stop count eight in your mind ready go stop do you know how many people just died eight times eight sixty four people eight people die every second can i tell you something there were some people who woke up in the earth realm this morning as i'm speaking to you now they are hearing me from hell praise the lord so you better take seriously what i'm saying this night hell is real it's a real location it's a real place those who have died without jesus christ business moguls billionaires religious leaders all kinds of people who ever has died without christ i'm telling you now that person is in hell right about now as we speak every man in the surface of the earth is going to spend eternity there is nothing like will you spend eternity you will the issue is location eternity is for sure hallelujah you are going to spend eternity the question is whether in heaven or hell there's no in between in the final analysis every inhabitant on the earth today from babies that were born to the oldest man right now they will be separated to two separate places either in hell or heaven if you believe that say amen the subject of heaven and hell has been rejected because of many depths and rema that has been coming you hardly find these teachings taught and where they are taught they are taught wrongly but i want you to know there is a place called hell the torment the second thing i want you to know about hell the first thing i told you was hell is real it's a real place we are starting with hell we'll come to heaven the second thing i want you to know is that the torment in hell is not acting is real everybody said the torment is real say one more time the torment is real jesus himself told us this luke 16. let's see the account of jesus the story of lazarus and the rich man luke 16 from verse 23 luke 16 from verse 23 please let me have two people come two people my brother you're already wearing red just stand here you will go to heaven you will make it errors stand here <laughs> hallelujah the bible tells us listen that in this earth realm there were certain people one was called the rich man is that true and there was another man who was called lazarus lazarus was a beggar in this earth realm the rich man was wealthy he was blessed he was fulfilled and the bible says in the course of time according to the wisdom of solomon the same destiny happens to all of them eventually they die let's see the drama many drama groups have acted this but they don't believe it can i tell you something it's not nigerian film right about now there are people being judged hallelujah he says and in hell he the rich man now when you get out of this life your status does not matter again are you hearing what i'm saying the money you gathered in the bank does not matter your educational qualification does not matter the number of wives you married and concubines you had does not matter are you hearing me now the bible says if our hope is only in this world we are of all men most miserable hear the wisdom of the world tonight a time will come nothing that matters in this earth will matter again not your looks not your marriage not your degree a time will come there will not be abu again no more dark no more fc no more nigeria no more politicians no more fighting for oil 
there will be no, you, there will be free oil on the ground with nobody to take it those who will be around will be too scared running for their lives nobody will mind any oil for anybody can i tell you something a day will come there will be no more koinonia again you will come to this place and find it empty because some of us would have checked out since hallelujah while i was growing up they were very sensible biblical films about heaven and hell that when you watch you sit down and ask yourself and he lifted up his word that means you will have eyes in hell hello your eyes will be alive and active in hell that tells me his senses were working in hell is that true the bible didn't say he lifted up his imagination he lifted up his eyes being in what torment a rich man he could not buy freedom he could not lobby his way he was in torment the bible says he seeth abraham afar off hallelujah and lazarus at his bosom hallelujah that was a section where those who had died believing the promise and keeping onto the covenant they were it was a section that they were not allowed to be touched because christ had not risen jesus christ needed to be the firstborn among many brethren nobody would have entered before him are you following me he needed to be the firstborn when he came he was the only begotten son but now he is the first begotten of we the brethren hallelujah next verse so here is the rich he said and he cried and said what that means you can identify people is that true there are people that laugh at us today that will see us one day and say joshua selman and i'll just look i'll say my brother the way things are right now you laughed at us and thought we were wasting our time but there is a gulf that divides us forever never to meet again hallelujah he says have what he was begging abraham you will beg many people when you get to hello so you better don't get there you will call the names of people begging he said he begged abraham he said send lazarus the man who you will kick in the earth today if you have everything in this life and you do not have jesus christ you have nothing are you hearing what i'm saying i don't care what qualification i don't care what material benefits i don't care what you have in this life if you do not have jesus a relationship with the lord jesus christ you have multiplied your destiny by zero the bible says that he may dip what the tip of his finger please look up what kind of suffering will make a drop of water an asset you can go to the dam this night and fetch water police will not arrest you is that true if you go to a filling station they will arrest you water is a free thing in the earth here but the bible says in hell you are buying foil 97 naira you go to hell and ask them how much a drop of water is are you following me this night he said that he may dip the tip of his finger in water the purpose was not to quench thirst the purpose was to cool his tongue that's the mouth that he used to say other people were wasting their time that's the mouth he used to confess his and acknowledge to to, to confess his, um, his his oneness with satan and to acknowledge that he does not like god and now that tongue the bible says this tongue has taken people to hell it's like a a wild animal for i am tormented in this flame i know that a lot of musicians have sung and they've taught people that it's better to be a king in hell is that not true continue you will find out whether there is any king in hell 
those people who have not gone to hell. See, Satan is called a deceiver. That somebody is dancing in a movie around fire and nothing happens. It's film trick. Let me tell you the truth. In hell, nobody is joking. God, Satan, demons, other people who are there. Nobody can help another person. And very soon, I tell you very soon, this age will wrap up. Listen to me. A day will come when Christ comes. Those who are left behind will hear Joshua Selman preaching. Oh yes, the messages will still be in laptops. Somebody will hear it. You have the opportunity to hear it right now. And take your destiny very serious. Hear me. You can choose to believe what I'm saying or not. That is irrelevant. If I tell you, sir, that you are not wearing a red shirt, does it change the fact that you are wearing a red shirt? Everybody will call Jesus Lord one day. The problem is for some people it's going to be too late. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very, very crucial. Next verse, please. He said, but Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime, not life eternity, life that is bounded by limited time. In your lifetime, receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Next verse. And beside this, between you, look at the backdrop. Media, God bless you. That's exactly what I want. Between you, between us and you, there is a great gulf that is fixed. So you can't say, This is my tribesman. Come, let me carry you. Leave the other people. No, it doesn't matter who you know or who you do not know. It says, So that they would not pass from hence to you. Cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from them. Verse 27. Don't forget, this is Jesus talking about this parable he said then he said so he started praying he said since there is no hope for me please i beg you father that thou wouldest send him to where to where you see the reason why we are serious about family salvation the guy was in hell and he was seen in the earth realm and he was seen that every member of his family was going to go and join him in hell. He said, at least, look at how the rich man became, see the fruit of the Spirit walking in him, by force in hell. Only a fool will say in his heart that there is no God. Next verse, please. For I have how many brethren? Five brethren, that he may testify unto them. That means let him go to hell and come back lest they also come into this place of torments. The next verse. Abraham said they have the law and they have the prophets. Let them hear. Let them hear. Hallelujah. This is the rich man. This is Lazarus. Hallelujah. When they got to hell, Lazarus was free, being comforted. The rich man, he did not carry one naira. He did not carry one certificate. He did not carry wife or children. He went there alone. And the Bible says why he cried and lamented. He said, no. They have Moses. They have the prophets. If they will not listen to them, it means even if somebody comes, they still will not listen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please follow me as I feel tonight. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Hallelujah. The fourth thing I want you to know, or the third thing I want you to know, for many years, listen. Ha, look up. I was told something many years ago they said sin is sin everybody will go to the same hell Abi, 
as if everybody would just pack them and say this is hell stay there i am going to show you that there are different degrees of punishment in hell not everybody gets everything let me show you there are different degrees let me tell you the truth matthew 11 let's rush matthew 11 you will love jesus with your life after this message matthew 11 i praise god i'm going to heaven can I imagine being in hell Matthew 11 verse 20 look at people shouting in hell are you there now listen then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not they saw mighty works yet they refused to repent next verse sir. he said woe unto thee Jesus is speaking again don't forget Jesus is speaking I'm showing you the teachings of Jesus so that you do not say ah this is a prophet's teaching or this is no he says woe unto thee Chorazin woe unto thee but said that he said for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes he says next verse but I say unto you it will be more it will be more is, is that in your Bible he said it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in that day of judgment that means your judgment is not the same that Tyre and Sidon is going to have it will be more tolerable for them on that day than for you hell is according to God's justice and there are people who will be in the worst of the worst of the worst places in hell if our life if our hope is just in this life please listen to me what you are hearing right now will speak against you on the last day if you do not listen carefully and take action there are many churches many pastors who don't take altar call they take seed call they take all kinds of calls but to take altar call they feel it's old school they don't take altar call a great man of god reverend dr uma Opai, years ago he died and when he went to heaven he said one of the things the lord accused him for was that he was not serious about the salvation and the soul of men we have taught it here the number one goal of this ministry the number one goal is to seek and save the lost hallelujah there is no level of church sophistication that will stop us from giving opportunity for people to give their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and I encourage you if you're a man of God in this place and you are neglecting the salvation of souls whether they are healed and they are not born again they are going to hell are you hearing what I'm saying whether they get married and receive breakthroughs whether you raise 100 wheelchairs and they are blessed whether they are delivered from demons they are not born again they are not going to heaven hallelujah praise the Lord are you learning something all these that I've said listen all this that I've said is not even the worst part of the story should I tell you the worst part I'm going to tell you the worst part now the worst part is that hell is not even the permanent place hell is a temporal place the name given to the permanent place is the lake of fire follow me so all those who are in hell are only doing rehearsals the reason let me prove to you listen let me prove this to you and don't laugh about this demons are not tormented in hell satan is not tormented in hell the official suffering of the lost will start the day satan joins them i hope you know <laughs> that means those who fell in the red sea and are in hell they are still rehearsing till today 
until Satan and death and hell and Hades are cast into the lake of fire. Then the meter will start reading and the gauge is eternity. Some of you used to give tracts before. You have allowed all kinds of misguided revelations to make you feel that the tracts you are giving are not of God. Some of the things written on the tracts are just pure religion. But you can edit it, package it with a kingdom mindset. There are many of you that used to preach to people and talk to people about spiritual things. Now you have become a nice person. Now it's the principles of prosperity. And we leave people. There are many of our family members. If they die today, the painful thing is you are going to see them in hell. So take what I'm saying very seriously. Because there are more people on their way to hell right now than we can ever imagine. The reality of heaven and hell. Hell is not the permanent place of judgment for the lost. Because in hell, only lost souls are tormented. Demons are not tormented in hell. Hallelujah. The final place of judgment of Satan alongside everyone that has come into partnership with him is revelations is it's found in revelations 20 the lake of fire let's look at it quickly revelations 20. i've listened to a lot of irritating evangelical messages i will never allow any man of god to climb my pulpit and teach junk and teach nonsense that will not convict people of sin of righteousness and judgment i don't care how famous the man is there there are many people hear me they say we don't want to offend anybody um we don't want to you, you look you let people just know just just the love dimension that's the only part it's nice they don't hurt people they have feelings really great men fathers of faith charles g finney dl moody these were men that preached with power and conviction when you sat in their meetings and you got born again your born again was genuine there was no hope of backsliding that message will remain in your memory one billion will not erase it but right now there are many christians so-called people who get born again and two days later they have left the things of God because the reason why they came to Christ was wrong the gospel was incomplete now there are those who all that they teach is they just threaten people and they make people run and come to salvation only in reaction to fear that is another incomplete gospel are you following me now and when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict you of three things number one of righteousness number two of judgment number three of what of sin sorry and number three of judgment our messages don't convict people of sin i'm not talking of condemnation i'm talking of conviction that will compel people to see the need for change right now somebody will go and sleep around drink around a man of god can go and sleep around and come and climb the stage and he's preaching and we preach messages that make people comfortable with sin very comfortable and they say it does not matter hallelujah we like messages that just cover it they say no no don't don't bring anything please this is a deceit from satan if some of you here are going to have churches hear me let me preach it into your spirit before god gives you members if god gives you members and you do not preach the full gospel including salvation from sin let me tell you god will hold you accountable for the lives of those people hallelujah i rather remain unpopular i rather remain unwanted and stand for the truth of god's word than to tell myself i am going to join what people are doing and what is happening and let people keep rejoicing and wearing nice suits but going to hellfire 
the priority is on the salvation of our soul. Let's read it. Revelation 20. From verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast where? Please read it. Read it. It's there. One to read. Was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Stop. One day, this terrorist called Satan will be relocated from where he is. And he will go to hell. Oh yes. That day will come. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. It was created by God himself. For the judgment and the punishment of Lucifer. He said where the beast and the false prophets. And who? And who? If you are a false prophet and you are sharing me. Repent this night. Prophets that use charms. Just all kinds of garbages because they are looking for money and they are looking for ministry expansion some of you are already happy you are mentoring the lives of these people you want to be like them you are waiting to go around and you to have your own small church and somebody gives you one kind of nonsense it says they shall be tormented when day and night forever and ever next verse sir. and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no place for them verse 12 and I saw the dead whether you are small whether you are great it doesn't matter I saw the dead small and great stand before God I'm going to show you something that defies many messages that preachers have been preaching and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life don't you let any man of God deceive you that there is no book called the book of life the Bible tells us there are books and there is the book and it's called the book of life whoever's name is not found there that person is going to hell and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their according to their is it in your Bible is it in your Bible next verse and the sea gave up the dead all the people that have died from the Red Sea and so on and so forth the sea will give them up and death and hell delivered the dead that were in them oh oh stop 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 listen the bible says death and hell did what they vomited those who were in them so hell is not just a location but here the bible gives hell the characteristic of a spirit and a living thing because it said hell gave up those who were in it is it in your bible i'm going to show you that hell is not just a place and a location but a spirit thank you jesus and they were judged every man according to their works verse 14 and death and hell were cast where this is the second death the second death is where death what you know today to be death and what you know to be hell will be relocated where what is a lake geography students Help us please so that there's no confusion this night. What is a lake? I can't remember what a lake is. What is a lake? A body of water surrounded by a body of water. That's what it's called. Lake. It's a lake of fire. It's not just fire around. It's not a gutter of fire. It's called what? A lake. Bonds with sulfur. Bonds with brimstone. The last verse 15. And whosoever was not found written into the book of life did what? Join them automatically. Whosoever politician, pastor, apostle, prophet, eloquent emoji, whosoever was not found in the book of life will go to hell 
please take seriously what I'm saying. This is a very, very serious message and a wake up call to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Let me show you one more time that death and hell is a spirit. Revelation 6, verse 7 and 8. This is part one, wherever we stop this night. Revelation 6. And when he had opened the fourth seal, there were some seals that were opened. And you will see the progressions. The first thing that happened was that there was a spirit of deception that came upon the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And then there were all kinds of death. And then there were all kinds of economic disaster. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. Verse 8. And I looked and I beheld a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was what? That means death and hell are friends. Is that in your Bible? Because according to this scripture, hell was taking a lift in the same horse with death. See, we are saying it now as if we are playing. But this is very serious. The Bible says, He that sat on him was called what? And hell followed him. And power was given to them. That means they were living. Them. Many of us are just seeing this for the first time. For many of us, you are shocked. I can see it on your face. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What does it profit you if you accomplish everything in this life and you become the greatest man of God or businessman or greatest whatever? What does it profit you if you give birth to 100 children? What does it profit you if the marriage comes and you go to hell? What does it profit you if the job comes and you go to hell? What does it profit you if the healing comes and you go to hell? What does it profit you if the ministry explodes and you go to hell? Hallelujah. I've shown you from scripture that hell is real. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Hell is real. Hell is real. Believe it, the earlier the better. The way some of us are living our lives, the way many of us are rejecting the truth of God's word, there is already danger of hell. The way many of our family members are already going, there is danger of hell. Are you passionate about the salvation of your loved ones? There is hell. There is hell. When I speak about heaven, then I will now talk to us. Maybe in part two. The various movements right now. Listen. Let me go ahead of myself a bit to whet your appetite. There have been many, let me tell you the strategy. The Lord opened my eyes to see it. When God started taking people out to heaven and hell to reveal certain things for them, it was on account of his desperation and his love for mankind. Are you hearing me? But like he rightly said, the rich man or Abraham said, he said, even if they come, they will not believe them. Now, when these people started bringing messages, great people like Mary Baxter, Mary Catherine Baxter, 1976, she had an encounter. She went to hell and she went to heaven. And she came back with a very balanced, very biblical view of hell. Today, we have, oh, please listen. I want to go ahead of myself just to challenge us. We have a lot of people who claim they have gone to hell and have come back with many reasons why they said many people were in hell. I read one article 
one satanic demonic article by somebody who said he went to hell and he listed the name of ev almost every man of God that had lived some of you have read it is that true alongside with those who are alive that God told them they are going to hell that is error from the pit of hell when when we start the B part I'm going to show you that the realm of the spirit is not heaven the realm of the spirit is an atmosphere there are many planes many people did not reach heaven they were deceived by demons the Bible says Satan can appear he can translate himself as an angel of light many people saw Satan they saw demons they were taken on tourism around planes in the spirit and they came back with diabolic satanic messages that are putting fear in the body of Christ I'm making every man I will round up this series with a teaching on assurance of salvation so that no devil will come and turn your head you can know that you know that you know that you are saved are you hearing what I'm saying? People have given all kinds of reasons. Ah, we went to hell and we saw so 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 people because you laughed at a man of God. You are in hell. No, sir. Uh -uh. The Bible does not teach all those kinds of junks because you didn't give offering. You went to hell. What, what kind of rubbish is that? The Bible says, even if an angel comes to preach another gospel let him be accursed even if an angel comes to preach what another gospel that means angels are preaching many people are receiving all kinds of satanic messages hallelujah are you hearing what i'm saying there are conditions that take people to hell I've read all kinds of things. Oh, somebody went to hell because they didn't cover their hair. Other people went to hell because they covered their hair. Oh, wait, wait for you. Oh my God. I have part, part two. Don't miss part two. We will examine the word of God. And so, there are many people who will hear these messages now and begin to yoke themselves with all kinds of bondage. And then there are many loose and careless people who will hear this kind of message and say, uh -huh, after all it does not matter. And be dressing like animals and be behaving as if Jesus did not die to bring them into a realm of dignity. All we are going to deal with it. From the rising of the sun Right on to it's going down We will sing Of the mercies of the Lord I will sing Of the mercies of the Lord With my mouth Shall I make it known From the right of the sun right on to it's going down I will sing all the mercies of the Lord look at me many people have been granted access to go to hell but there are many many books hear me please there are many books. If you have never seen a woman in your life, I can leave this phone and tell you this is a woman and you will believe. Is that true? But where you have seen a woman, if I tell you this is a beautiful woman, you say no. This is speaker. Is that true? Many people are being deceived in the body of Christ. There are all kinds of books circulating. And now, most of these divine revelation books become bestsellers instantly because people buy it. So some people have gotten it as a good opportunity for business. Are you seeing that now? Cheap business. Marketing without tears. Just say I went somewhere. And I saw your brother or somebody say you saw him. Yes, I saw him. 
He said, I should come and tell you, this red t-shirt you are wearing, you will come to hell. Start wearing only white. And now you see people will go ahead and say they said it. As though God left us in the dark about heaven and hell. There is nothing about life after now that was left in the dark. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible is a complete compendium of the truth of God's word. Your encounter of heaven or hell or any book you will read should only confirm and add to your confidence about the reality. It should not be the basis. You cannot give your life to Christ because somebody went to hell and came back alone. As good as that is, your salvation is not founded upon the integrity of the world. When you share another version, you will switch again. Then you share another version, then you switch. At the end of it, you are moving up and down and you are confused. You don't know where to belong again. You were eating garlic before. Now you have stopped. You were eating onion. You read and they said part of the things they saw in hell was onion. Now you have stopped. One woman, hear me, years ago, she brought one diabolic book and she called me. I was there. It's not that they told me. They said the former pope, that was in the book of that the former pope was the antichrist they did some kind of horrible calculations and arrived at 666 praise god the pope that died though they said he was the antichrist and she looked at me and she was advising me this is my auntie now i think she has changed i've not seen her in years praise the lord but this is what she told me she said my son right now she said she doesn't eat meat again she's practicing for the two she said if they lock her somewhere she was being very emotional it didn't make sense to me because i was planning i had gone through a lot in my life god was just helping me to begin to partake of the blessings of the kingdom and i said what kind of frustrating gospel is this hallelujah many prophets came to our homes and tore our homes into two with all kinds of satanic gospels they just came and said your wife is a witch will you let her take you to hell the man said, how can i go to hell madam pack your load out of my house if your finger will take you to hell cut it off if your wife who is not cooking for you who, and you are already i want concubine so you find a scripture even my wife will not stop me your wife may let you down get out of my house many madness is going on in the body of christ because people are perverting truth in the name of heaven and hell. Let me tell you, as you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. Hallelujah. People sow preservation seeds for their salvation. Oh yes, there is what we call battle seed. Battle seed. You drop seed and they intercede for you to make sure you are still in the faith. He is risen from the dead. He is Lord. Light is shining in the darkness. Let me talk briefly about the reality of heaven. Let's touch it quickly so that next week we will take on other issues. There are many planes in heaven. The sky that you look at is not heaven. The Bible tells us that at least from scripture we see that there are three levels of what we call heaven. The first is what you call your atmosphere. Your atmosphere. Isaiah 55 verse 9 and 10. Your atmosphere. Isaiah 55 verse 9 and 10 Isaiah 55 verse 9 and 10 Hallelujah It says for as the heavens How many heavens? Did you see S there? Did you see S after heaven? For as what? The heavens So there are heavens There's not just a heaven There are heavens But there is what the Bible calls the heaven 
of heavens now listen that was an ancient language to show the superiority of something above others king of kings daughter of daughters sinner of sinners are you getting my point now so heaven higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and you know thoughts my thoughts so you can see that there are different levels of heaven the first level is the one you can see we call it your atmosphere the atmosphere where birds fly around you see clouds that's the first level the second plane of heaven that we know is what you may want to call the outer space the outer space where we have the sun the moon the planetary bodies galaxies genesis 1 verse 14 to 17 confirms to us that this plane exists genesis 1 verse 14 to 17 hallelujah then there is the third heaven now there are other dimensions i will not begin to talk about it there is the spiritual sphere of heaven i follow me now when when daniel was praying the bible says as gabriel was bringing the message what happened the prince of Persia, the spiritual wickedness that was a plane of heaven where spirits could operate our bible says that the stars fought for deborah are you seeing i'm showing you biblical confirmations wise men from the east they saw these stars job began to speak about all of these stars zodiac atarus and all of these things this is where all these um what they call them stargazers stargazers and astrologers and necromancers all these people they use these kinds of things and they invoke things in the earth realm from these planes of heaven but there is the third heaven the dwelling place of God write it that's the heaven we are talking about the dwelling place of God is also called paradise 2nd Corinthians 12 verse 2 to 4 let's look at it very quickly and then we'll just stop and pray so heaven is the dwelling place of God the heaven of heavens now 2nd Corinthians 12 verse 2 to 4 it says I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago whether in the body I cannot tell this is Paul speaking or whether out of the body I cannot tell God know it it says such a one was caught up to where caught up to where so you can see in the Bible there was something called the third heaven that's the heaven of heavens where God himself dwells Psalms 11 verse 4 Psalms 11 verse 4 Hallelujah Can we read it one to read The Lord is in where His holy temple The Lord's throne is where So heaven is where the throne of God is All these things I'm telling you from the Bible I'm letting the word of God speak because this is a very sensitive topic it says the lord's throne is in heaven his eyes behold his eyelids try the children of men so his throne heaven is where the throne of god is situated right now right about now heaven is the place where god dwells isaiah 66 verse 1 how are we sure that god dwells in heaven Isaiah 66 verse 1 Everyone please read One to read The heaven is my throne And the earth So he said the heaven is where? My throne The earth my footstool One last scripture Revelation 21 Sheba katabala I want to show you something. Revelation 21. One to read. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no more sea. This was talking about 
the heaven of God coming down to the earth. So he called it a new heaven because people had never seen it with their visible eyes. A new heaven, a new earth. The old one that had seas, he wiped it away. And he said, and there was no more sea. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you believe there is a place called heaven? Do you believe there are people there right now? Let me tell you, there are people there right now. I want to bring you a word of comfort. Listen. For everyone here who has ever lost a bereaved member in Christ, I want you to rejoice. This is where they are right now. They are listening to koinonia messages right now. I tell you the truth. They are standing at the corridors of heaven and they are cheering us up. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, speaks about this cloud of witnesses. It says, seeing then, let's protect it. Wherefore seeing then that we are encompassed with what? A cloud of witnesses. He said, because this great, your cousin, your mother, your father, your loved ones, you cried and you threw them to the earth. But from the moment they stopped breathing, they had gone to be with the Lord. This is a glorious message. The Bible says, comfort one another with these words. Those who die in Christ have only entered a level of rest. The Bible says, Paul speaking, he said, for me to live is Christ. I know my grandfather is there. He lived his whole life preaching this great gospel till he died. And his glorious wife who stood close to him to the last drop of her blood. Many of your loved ones, they are hearing me right now from the corridors of heaven. I bring you a word of hope. There is nothing called too late in this life. If any man dies in Christ, you will see them again and there will be a glorious reunion. When all is said and done, you will see them again. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem and the hopes and all our tears will be no more. We will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you evermore. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our tears and all our sorrows will be no more. I will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. I will worship and adore Him evermore. We'll sing it one more time. We will stand in the golden city. Jerusalem, all our tears and all our sorrows will be no more. We will stand with the host of heaven. We will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy Spirit. I will never forget years ago. Hear me. I had a classmate. This guy was a stickler. I was in secondary school. And this crisis started and it was so bad. It got to a point where he was in the hospital. A night before he would die. Listen to me. My vice principal called me and he said, let's go and visit him. The whole class, we had prepared to go and visit him the next day. And when we got there, I looked at him. I remember holding his hands. They were born triplets. Only one is alive now. I held his hands and I smiled. I told him, don't worry, you will be fine. And every time this guy looks at me, the next thing, he seemed to be distracted with another realm that he was seeing. And then he would smile back at me. And I was looking at him. I was saying, ah, you know that 
we are going to come and we'll see you and he laughed and i held his hands little did i know that would be the last time in this earth realm i went back by the next day they called me and they said my precious brother was gone but together with him i will stand in the golden city in the new jerusalem when there is no more accident no sickness no cancer i don't know what took the life of your loved ones i bring you a message of hope if they died in christ they are alive even if they did not die in christ it is hope for you now to take up the, the mantle of evangelism and tell yourself i will preach to the uttermost this life is vanity vanity upon vanity i announce to you koinonia marriage compared to your eternal salvation is vanity ministry is vanity every other thing is vanity five minutes without breath in your nostril and you appear in that glorious place or a place of torment five minutes whether in the sick bed or whatever it is but will you be crying holy holy is the lord or will you be languishing will you be crying there are many people who are too busy for god right now they are too busy for the things of god they are busy looking for money busy looking for husband busy looking for wife busy looking for open doors in ministry can i tell you something brothers and sisters if our hope is only in this life i announce to you again our hope we are of all men most miserable but there is a glorious message and this is the crux of salvation that any man that dies in christ any man begin to think of all your loved ones that died in christ i want you to know that right from the dead bed there were angels that came to take them you were only mourning a corpse the real person went into a place of glory and splendor where there is no more night yonder place where the lights are shining bright jesus christ will make all things all right in his time he'll really make me see otherwise it really won't be right he's gonna put all my heart to rest he's gonna put all my heart to rest yes he will put your heart to rest this is a song of prophecy to you he released me and directed me in the sea of above. No more crying, no more night. There'll be no weeping on that day. Darkness rolled away, no more sorrow in that city of above. No more night, no more night in that city. No more night. No more night in that city, no more night. Yes, it will happen. The sun will no more give me sunlight by no more the moonlight by Jehovah will be my everlasting light.
come the sun will no longer give us light the moon will not give us light the presence of i am himself will light that city bible says the light of the moon will be like that of the sun i tell you this song is very powerful can i sing it one more time sun will no more give me sunlight by day in that city the moon will no more give me sunlight by day come no politician will cause trouble in the world again but it is only those who are in Christ who will appear in heaven hear me i'm still going to make an altar call this is an altar call by revelation right now no more night no more night in that city no more night no more night in that city no more night no more night in that city listen adam never knew how old he was because he never saw night the first night adam saw was outside the garden of eden i want you to know brothers and sisters the life that you are living was a loan that was given to you by God and the way you live your life in this earth realm will determine your life after here at the end of Paul's life he said i have fought how did he put it i have fought the good fight of faith he said now daring lies for me a crown brothers and sisters let me tell you You know the reason why I do all that I do with passion because I know one day I will stand before his majesty and he will look at me he will say Joshua Sam and I gave you a measure of grace and he will say well done thou good and faithful servant enter thou into my rest Hallelujah rise up on your feet everybody Listen to me. There are some of you here. Listen. When you started out with God, you used to produce tracks. Some of you when you started out on Facebook, you used to use it for evangelism. But right now you have turned it into something else. I want you to return back to the ministry of soul winning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do not sit down and look at people This ministry he and I started on the wings of evangelism pastors never take lightly the issue of turning many to righteousness the bible says in daniel chapter 12 verse 3 it said and they that be wise shall be like the firmament of the heavens and they that turn many to righteousness they shall shine as the stars even forevermore Daniel 12 verse 3 We are going to pray three prayer points very quickly The first prayer point is a prayer of repentance This is not whether you are born again or not You are going to say Lord I believe in my life I see by how the master key to my life but right now I make up my mind to focus on the things that really matter lift your voice and begin to pray the way many of us have been living our lives 
The Bible says the prodigal son spent all he had on riotous living. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I know that life is a privilege. 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 From today, I live my life as though I would give account of it. Stop living your life anyhow. Nobody may see you. But let me tell you something. You will stand before God. There is a place called heaven. There is a place called hell. There are people here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Please, in the next one minute, I'd like you to pray for all your loved ones that you know. You know they are on their way to hell. There is no doubt about it. Lift your voice and say, Lord, mercy. Please, mercy. Your father, your mother, your brothers, your sisters. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I know that the way they are going, they are on the highway to hellfire. Have mercy, O God. Visit them through dreams, through visions, through encounters. Visit them. Lift your voice and pray for your loved ones. Say, Lord, arrest them. Arrest them. Lead them to meetings. Connect them to TV programs. He that winneth souls is wise. Say, Lord, I take the issue of salvation seriously. There are people going to hell. There are intellectuals going to hell. There are professors on their way to hell. There are medical doctors on their way to hell. There are many good people, very good people, but they are on their way to hell. There are many kind people. There are many of our neighbors, classmates. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. The last prayer point. The Bible says, we will talk about it next week. It said, examine yourself to see if you are still in the faith. Can I tell you something? I would, I would, we are going to talk about it next week. Whether a man can lose his salvation or not. Let me tell you straight to the point. A man can lose his salvation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But I will tell you the conditions. But a man... The Bible says those who were once in Christ, who have tasted of the powers of the ages to come, if they now turn aside from God, how bad is their judgment? There is a man in scripture called Demas. Have you read about that man? A man called Demas that started in the faith, but he derailed. I'm not talking of backsliding. I'm talking of getting out of the faith completely. Realize hear me my entire life changed the day it dawned on me that there is the all-seeing eyes of God these were songs that we used to sing with power let me tell you those who wrote these songs were not looking for money Lord the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us, set us free by the truth, you now bring us, shine on me, shine on me, shine Jesus, shine, fill this land with your Father's glory. Lord and let 
give me one more minute and we're out. I'm going to make an altar call again. I don't care whether you have been preaching for 100 years. Listen, if you know that you know that if the trumpet of God sounds this night, right now, you are not going to heaven. Look, let me tell you, don't pretend it. I know you have done evangelism. You may even be praying in tongues. If you know that if the trumpet of God sounds right now, you are not going to, you can fake it. You can fake it. But let me tell you something. Every sign that needs to happen for the coming of Jesus has happened. Right now we are only waiting. The last sign is what is going on now. This gospel of the kingdom. Outside, especially, there are many of you standing. I want you to run right now and come and go on your knees here everybody whoever knows that if jesus comes now don't wait for anybody to come you are the first person leave your seat and run if you are still sitting go back to your seat please we are very serious this night come and kneel down here and just begin to talk to the lord forget about anybody who is here forget about your friend your boyfriend your girlfriend your children outside i want you to run and come we are out of time Begin to cry unto God with a passion, with a passion. I give you my soul. With a passion, if there is no space, there is space on the altar. You must find space. This is your night of salvation. There must be space for you. Don't sit back there. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, you may be a prayer coordinator. You may be a pastor. I'm not asking you to be a pastor. Only for Join them as we cry. Say, Lord, enough is enough. Those of you kneeling down, say, Lord, I truly come with a broken heart. I'm tired of telling lies. I'm tired of pretending. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to spend eternity in hell. Try out your heart to God. Let's go. 
Lord, I pledge my life. I pledge allegiance that I will live for you. Relationship will not take me to hell. Immorality will not take me to hell. Drunkenness will not take me to hell. Fashion will not take me to hell. Cry unto the Lord. Secret lives that don't bless God. Now is the time to tell God it's over. You can do things that no man sees. But a day will come. We will stand before the white throne of God. I announce to you what you are sharing this night is the method. Don't let it stand against you. God is merciful. Don't feel condemned. He will not condemn you. There is always mercy and grace. But be convicted enough. out of time. Let me pray for you. There are many of you crying. Let me tell you these tears are expressions in your spirit. Some of you have tried and tried but this night, Jesus the judge of all the earth brings you rest. He said, come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Rest from your struggles. I want you to know you can find true rest. You can find true rest. All of you that are kneeling down, never forget this day for the rest of your life. I'd like you to say, Jesus, have mercy on me. I'm tired of living the life that does not please you. I want to live a meaningful life having you in this life and I want to be with you in heaven therefore this night whatever will stop me from making heaven take it out of my life take it out of my life I break free from wrong associations many of you when you go back home Break all those pornographic CDs into pieces. Set them on fire and watch it burn. Scramble those devilish channels that keep preparing you to go to hell. All those pictures and those satanic sites on Facebook. All those wrong videos on YouTube. Now is the time to make a decision. Don't say it does not matter. Don't say it does not matter. Go and open new Facebook sites and advocate for Jesus. Go and open sites. Go and begin to talk to your loved ones. Go and make drafts. You don't need to have a ministry. You can make it. Take your 5,000. Make drafts with it. Go and drop it in the restaurant. The least that you do for the kingdom will be rewarded. Hallelujah. We're out of time. Let me pray. Father, your word has come expressly. I pray, I pray that this will not just be an emotional activity. I pray, Spirit of the living God, quicken these ones that from today and for the rest of their life, they will never go back to Satan, they will never go back to sin, they will never go back to the way of death. Father, I pray that you write their names in the book of life. Let there never be an occasion that should the trumpet sound, O oh God, that they will not miss rapture. May they remain rapturable. Therefore, I pray for you. All the wrong friends and associations 
that keep leading you back to sin and the ways of death I separate you from them forever in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord bless you please rise up follow the ushers they will write your name I will also come not just Pastor Jake I will be there tomorrow to make sure that we have some time of follow up I will be there personally with Pastor Jake and we are going to be talking to you please follow the ushers they will just have your details hallelujah celebrate Jesus for what he said hallelujah five minutes and we are out of here hallelujah please invite all your friends what I am about to share with you next week is very pivotal we are going to take part two of the reality of heaven and hell hallelujah the reality of heaven and hell part two you are worthy to be glorified in the name of Jesus for the mighty things that you are doing we honor you and we praise you blessed be the name of the Lord hallelujah we started considering the subject of heaven and hell a very powerful subject um, this subject is not taught as much in the body of Christ again for many reasons um, we just feel that it puts fear in people and we live in a time and an age where people should not be made to be afraid unfortunately if we do not teach people about the reality of the afterlife that there is eternity beyond this realm we will be cheating them this is the heart of the Christian experience hallelujah so we started last week part one was proving to us from scripture that there is a place called heaven and there is a place called hell say one more time there is a place called heaven in case you've been indoctrinated to believe there is no heaven it doesn't make any difference there is one day you will see one of those places for sure whether you believe it or not hallelujah so the question is not will you spend eternity that's the wrong question it's the location you will spend eternity for sure hallelujah and jesus himself in luke 16 he began to tell us about the reality of heaven and hell in the parable that he himself gave about the rich man and lazarus hallelujah how that the rich man went to hell you know and then he met lazarus and so on and so forth and and we showed from the scriptures that there is a place called heaven heaven is where god dwells and we established please don't forget because we are building on it this night remember last week we established that there are many planes of heavens is that true that the realm of the spirit is not just heaven you will need that revelation for what i'm about to teach this night that you are out of a realm that is not earth does not mean you are in heaven i mean where god dwells there is the first heaven there is the second heaven there is the third heaven paul writes it in scripture that he was caught up to the third heaven the bible calls it the heaven of heavens and that description it was it was an ancient way of showing the superiority of something above another king of kings lord of lords i follow me now servant of servants daughter of daughters so when we say the heaven of heavens that's the plane where God lives. There is a location right now today called heaven. Where the throne of God is. Where the angels reside. The governing center of the universe. And there is a place called hell. Hell is the place of torment. We established that last week. That hell is a place of torment. Hallelujah where all those who die without the lord jesus christ in their lives they go there automatically hallelujah and then i told us a few things that i think i should remind us of again remember i told you that hell is not only a location but hell is a spirit remember i proved to you from revelations that hell death the grave they are all spirits and i told you that hell is not the final destination for the lost is that true 
Where is the final destination? The lake of fire. Because in hell, demons are not tormented. In hell, Satan is not tormented. So that cannot be the final place of judgment. Alright? I told you that those who have been lost, who have died outside Christ, right from Genesis till today, they have not started their punishment yet. They will officially start when Satan and death and the grave are relocated to the lake of fire. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. Are you following me? The lake of fire was not designed by Satan. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. It was specifically designed for the judgment of Lucifer and all those who come into partnership with him. So there is a place called hell. There is a place called the lake of fire. Hallelujah. And there is a place called heaven. I told you the first heaven is this atmosphere. The atmosphere that we see where the birds fly, the firmaments with the clouds and so on and so forth. Hallelujah. And then we have the, 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 the space where we have galaxies. We have all kinds of things there. Both the ones that scientists have seen and the ones that they will discover. We also have planes in the spirit. For instance, remember the Bible says that when Daniel was praying, is that true? That while the angel was coming from the heaven of heavens into the earth realm, interfacing the earth realm was a plane and there was a territory where wicked spirits could function and they tried to stop Gabriel. The Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, powers, rulers, and what? Spiritual wickedness, where? In heavenly places, not place, places. That means there are many planes. If you understand this, you will appreciate what I'm about to teach tonight. Hallelujah. Because the part two of this series, in the part two, I'm going to be considering three great deceptions that the devil has released upon the body of Christ as regards heaven and hell. Are you listening to me? There are three great deceptions. So, right. Three great deceptions that we are going to be considering this night. And let me tell you the truth. It concerns you. Pay close attention. God is going to be correcting a lot of error that probably some of us have carried, we have taught, or we have listened to. Some of us have written books or read books with this error. We are going to be considering this widespread issue of out-of-body experiences now, where people come back with divine revelations. We are going to be examining it this night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The first deception that the devil softly is bringing upon mankind and it is gradually entering the body of Christ, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one is an unbalanced teaching about the concept of heaven on earth. An unbalanced teaching about the concept of heaven on earth. How many of you have heard that statement, heaven on earth? Now, there is a balanced scriptural perspective. But there is a dimension to which that teaching gets to that it becomes an error. Are you getting me now? Many people in their discoveries of spiritual things, as they seek to understand the truth of scripture, because the Bible says in the end time knowledge shall increase. So people are exploring spiritual things and many people are beginning to come up with the concept and, and the verse that we use is Matthew 6 from verse 10 and 11. The Bible says, let it be done in the earth as it is in is that true? That tells us that God's idea is that earth should be a replica of the heavens. And that is very true. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That is God's idea. This is why even at the rapture, we will go to heaven and we will still return back to a new heaven and a new earth. Revelations 19, 20 and 21 talks about the new heaven. He said, he, he said, come and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. He said, and he took me and I saw a city, a heavenly Jerusalem coming down. 
and then it lists the kinds of people who will not be allowed to enter that city however please listen however there is a movement right now that is beginning to build upon this concept of God's idea to want heaven on earth a lot of people are already preaching right now that there is no place called heaven again that the heaven has already come to the earth and anybody who is thinking that he will go and meet God in heaven is wasting his time that is an error from the pit of hell are you getting me now for you to deny the fact that there is a location called heaven where Christ is seated remember the Bible tells us that Stephen in scripture I want to rush are you, are you following me now I want to show you the scriptural proof remember when they were about to stone Stephen the Messiah what did he see the Bible says he saw the heavens open is that true and he saw who God was sitting on a throne not roaming around sitting on a definite throne and he saw Jesus Christ standing by his right hand side is that true this also proves the concept of the Trinity let me digress a little now if you study theology listen if you study theology there are certain there are certain words that we use that are not in the Bible for instance you don't find the word Trinity in the Bible is that true you don't find the word rapture in the Bible are you following me now and certain theologians in their quest to explore truth without the help of the Holy Spirit have come up with certain things for instance the Bible says hear ye O Israel the Lord our God is one God and a lot of people say forget it there is only one God anywhere the concept of the Holy Spirit is an error the concept of a father and a son is an error but the word one there in Hebrew is plural just like the Bible says in the beginning God the, the Hebrew word here is Elohim Elohim is plural the singular is Eloha so in the beginning God the entire entity of the Godhead made um, you know they created the heavens and the earth are you getting it now this absence of understanding truth with the agency of the Holy Spirit led men now to say oh there is one God in terms of just one person there is no Jesus there is no anything like the Holy Spirit and you know and so on and so forth and it has brought a lot of error so I am showing you I'm going to show you in two places because scripture says in the mouth of two or three witnesses is any matter established is that true number one proof of the Trinity remember in the baptism of Jesus Christ so we see the word who is the second person of the Trinity there and John is about to baptize him is that true the Bible says as soon as he came out of the water what happened the heavens were opened again that means the Holy Ghost came from heaven not from a grave is that true the Holy Ghost came resting upon him we see another entity of the Trinity and there was a voice from a separate entity saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him have you gotten that now you go to the book of Acts where Stephen is about to be matthias and the Bible says Stephen full of the Holy Ghost that means the Holy Ghost was in him is that true he looks to heaven and he sees God the Father sitting a separate individual entity and Jesus in another throne separate and distinct so don't you let anybody tell you that the concept of Trinity does not exist let me give you one more scripture are you ready Genesis 1 26 we are going to read the first six words there Genesis 1 26 or the first five words really are you ready one to read and God said let it is a let me and God said let 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 us who are the other people and Eloha that's the word here one of the Trinity said let us together make this entity called Adam man hallelujah very important 
while Jesus walked upon the earth, he was full of the Holy Ghost. Is that true? Yet he kept talking about his father. He kept talking about his father. He kept talking about someone else that was not him. Remember, he said that it is expedient that I go. For if I do not go, the comforter will not come. And he said the comforter will proceed from the father. He will take of what is of the father and reveal it to you. Hallelujah. It's a lot of erroneous teachings. Anyway, let's go back to our heaven on earth. So, heaven on earth is a reality in that, listen please, let me explain to you the concept of heaven on earth as far as the church age is concerned. When the Bible says in his prayer, Jesus teaching the disciples, hallelujah, he said, let it be done in the earth as it is in heaven. In, in other words, I want my life, my character, my culture, my value system, are you, are you following me now? The same way it is in the heavens to be reproduced in the earth. It does not literally mean take the heavens in all its fair and put there. The reason is because there are some things in the earth realm that are not in heaven. For instance, there are no physical bodies in heaven. The bodies in heaven are not made of clay. Are you following me now? The bodies in heaven are made of spiritual substances and lightning. For instance, the angels. The angels were created from light. The light that strikes in your thunder. That was the material of their creation. Are you following me now? This is why Jesus looked at Satan and said, I saw Satan like light falling. And the Bible says Satan can translate himself as an angel of light. Something happened to his configuration when he fell. There was a corruption that happened to him. So he's no longer in his perfect state. When you look at Satan at the creation, that's before Genesis 1 verse 2. When you look at Satan, you will see objects of worship was used in his creation. He was not only among the highest angelic kedah. Are you following me now? Satan was the chief of all the angels. And because he stood near God, there was a rub off of God's glory on him. The same thing happened to Moses. When Moses stood near God, what happened? So imagine how much Satan was bright because he had been ministering in the presence of God for a long time. It was that brightness that made even other angels admire him. And one day he said to himself, Can I not exalt myself above the stars of God? So he had a movement to dethrone God. Hallelujah. And Satan, alongside other angels, Leviathan, Apollyon, there's no time I would have shown you from scripture. These were the spirits that came together. Satan did not lead the rebellion alone. No single man. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that one third of the angels joined Satan's party and together they all fell. One third of the entire angelic host. They are the disembodied spirits we call demons today. This is why their operation in the earth realm is illegal. Are you getting me now? Because their body was not designed to function in the earth realm. Please, are, are you getting what I'm saying now? So, they can downgrade themselves. This is why there are angels that can appear in human form. They are called ministering spirits. Are you getting me now? These are the angels that can appear. Someone, have, how many of you have had these kinds of encounters? That someone came to, or had testimonies. That somebody came to rescue another person. Having a material body, but they didn't see the person again. These are ministering spirits. I've had one of those encounters. I've said it. How that one time I was in Abuja. We had Maraba and I came down from a bus and left my wallet there. Hallelujah. When I left my wallet, I just realized that the bus had gone. It was a busy market. I didn't even know how I was going to get that. And then Manasseh took a bike to run and go and look for the bus person. While he was going, there was no hope. The next thing, I just saw a man limping with my wallet. And he came and gave it to me. That was it. Real, solid experience.
Many of you have seen them. You thought it was your brother. They can carry. Somebody can call you and talk to you. You will call the person back later. You say, I cannot remember calling you. These angels are, are they are they are the, the manifest the Bible says, are they not ministering spirits? Sent to minister, to serve they that be the heirs of salvation. They are the ones that lead people to meetings. Sometimes they just come and knock. And you think it was the same person, whereas that person has gone, has come for koinonia already. Some of them come in the midst of this. There are times I see them when the Lord opens my eyes to see somebody's case. Then you see, oftentimes the moment I see them, they stand up quietly and walk. They have been around. They are here right now, scattered around. Not everybody you see here is a human being. Be shouting at people. <laughs> You see why it's good to be well behaved in church? Hallelujah. So heaven on earth. There is a place called heaven. And there is a place called earth. And listen. A time will come when there will be a new heaven and a new earth. That time will not happen in the church age. Are you getting me please? Don't confuse yourself at all. There is the dispensation of the church age. In the book of Revelation, Daniel, I mean, um, um, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and certain things were revealed to him. Is that true? And he said, right, the things that were. What are the things that were? The things that have happened in creation until the dispensation of the church age. The things that are, are the things that are encapsulated prophetically in the seven churches. It represents the seven dispensation of the church age. And then from Revelation chapter 4, he now told him, come up hither and I will show you. I want to start revealing to you the things that will happen after the dispensation of the church age. So he began to address different churches. The church in Pagamos, the church in Smyrna, the church in Laodicea. All of these churches represent different physical... There were real seven churches in Asia Minor. But prophetically, it, seven is the number for perfection. Is that true? And it represented the entire span of the church. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? So John began to see how that there were certain things that happened that after there was the exit and we'll talk about that of the church certain vials were poured upon the earth is that true an angel would blow a trumpet and certain vials will be poured upon the earth one third of the vegetation will go one third of the water will be bitter can i tell you something those things are not prophetic statements they will happen one day in this earth Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So an unbalanced teaching of heaven on earth. Heaven will come to the earth. But it's not going to be this kind of earth. Are you following me? Look at me. I want to say something that is going to shock you now. Look at me. How many of you have heard of the Garden of Eden? Now, I want to shock you. The Garden of Eden was only brought to the earth as an adumbration of what is going to happen in the book of Revelations. The Garden of Eden was not pure earth. That's why it has not been found till now. It was taken away when man came out. The Garden of Eden is still intact. Let me prove it to you. Realize that there were two trees in the Garden of Eden. One was called what? The other was called what? Go to Revelations and see the same tree of life there again. Nothing has happened to the tree. The tree is still here. Look at many of you just looking at me. God sent man out of the Garden of Eden. Listen, I will tell you that the Garden of Eden was not just earth, material earth alone. Because look at the beings that guarded it when he sent them out. The cherubim and a flaming sword. Hallelujah. So heaven will come to the earth. But this is after the church is raptured. Alright, so that's number one great deception. 
the unbalanced teaching of heaven on earth the for us now in the church age the concept of heaven on earth is to bring the reality listen to me please of the life the atmosphere the culture and the value system of heaven not to dethrone god and carry the entire throne and relocate it to the earth as many people are teaching now that is an unbalanced view number two this one is a very sensitive one the teaching against the concept of rapture we're going to talk about rapture a bit right now please look up the teaching against the concept of rapture that's the deception number two i call them great deceptions look up please how many of you have had a lot of nice teachings by great people saying there is nothing called a rapture that the rapture will never happen there will not be an exit of anybody out of the earth can i tell you the truth listen to me don't you let anybody deceive you now the men of god who are teaching these things are not fake they are genuinely honest but let me tell you the truth the best of a man is a man are you hearing what i'm saying this is why in ministry the word of god not prophetic experience must become the absolute basis of whatever it is that you teach people you teach people things from the word of god and then support it with whatever relevant experiences that are consistent with the word of god first thessalonians 4 let's answer this question once and for all is there an event that will happen in the world where there will be a massive exiting of people because a lot of people have preached it written books about it some of us have even believed it that there is nothing nothing about the rapture verse 13 this is paul speaking to the church in thessalonica first thessalonians 4 verse 13 are you there but i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them that are asleep so this is talking about death now and the afterlife is that true he's trying to reveal to the church he said that ye sorrow not even as others who have no hope all right verse 14 for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them who are asleep god will bring with him start noticing the construction of this scripture next verse he said for this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord stop that means there is an event called the coming of the lord is that true the coming of the lord i will explain it to you those outside if you are following say amen unto the coming of the lord all right shall not precede them who are asleep asleep means those who are dead physically verse 16 it says for the lord himself shall do what shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall do what they shall rise first that means there is a resurrection that will happen next verse it said then we who are alive and remain shall do what shall be caught up together with them where in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord it says wherefore comfort one another with these words look up please are you seeing that there is an event the bible says what will happen is that the heavens will open is that true god himself christ now will descend with a loud shout the shout of an archangel can i tell you something only those who are in christ will hear that shout the bible says the trumpet will be blown in zion it said blow the trumpet where in zion sound the alarm on my holy mountain there are people who will not hear that sound are you are you getting me now so the bible said he will descend physically all eyes will see him 
But here it is, listen. In the first coming of Christ, his feet is not going to touch this earth. Are you getting me? The Bible says he will descend and in a fraction of a second, everyone who has ever died in Christ, whether it's in your bedroom before you built your house or wherever, the Bible says they will all come out at once with glorified supernatural bodies. They will be the ones to be honored first because they died in Christ. We who are alive instantly as they are being translated, this body will be changed. The Bible says, listen, it's, that's when we say, oh death, where is your sin? Because we will now look at our bodies. Ah, this is a material body. It was that body Jesus resurrected with. That's why he entered the, inside the room. He didn't need to knock. He just entered and said, All hail, all authority in heaven. He walked, he resurrected as the firstborn among us who are coming. Before he died, he was the only begotten son. But he's no longer the only begotten son. He's now the firstborn. That's why all those who died before Jesus were kept in the bosom of Abraham. They could not have resurrected. It would stop Jesus from being the firstborn. He was the tithe of God. Are you getting me now? The first fruit after his ascension, the Bible says grace opened and other people now followed him. Are, are you understanding now? So there is an event called rapture. Whether CNN believes it or not, it's irrelevant. Whether Freemasons and the Illuminati and those who control the media mock and scorn at it, whether our brothers and sisters laugh at it, can I tell you, I see a lot of people mock God with audacity. The Bible says before the Son of Man comes, it will be as it were in the days of Noah. What happened in the days of Noah? It said build an ark. Judgment is coming. When Noah was building the ark and calling all the animals, some people were laughing at him. But the Bible says at a certain time, God closed the door and it began to rain 40 days. This is how it will be. As in the days of Noah. Some of you, every time you hear these messages, you laugh at it because you think it's just some story story that you did in Sunday school. Whether you believe it or not, there are some of our parents today, they have read books and read books and read God out of their life and they do not believe. They say it does not sound logical. Do you know something? Let me give you a little preview of what will happen when we check out of this place. The Bible says even death will run away from people. This death that everybody is running away from, some people will come to the mountains and say, fall on us. If a mountain is falling on you now, won't you run? But the Bible says compared to the horror that will happen to the earth, people will beg the mountain to come and crush them. Are you getting me? It will happen. By that time we are out of this place. We will be out of this place. Many of you are not living like missionaries. The Bible says Abraham sought for a city whose builder and maker is God. Let me tell you, if you do not live with eternity in view, you will live a useless life. I don't care how many houses you build. I don't care how many wives you marry and how many other concubines you have. I don't care how many books you read. If your eternity is not secured, you are all men most miserable. Let me announce it to the body of Christ now. There is an event whether you call it the rapture or give it your own tribal name, it doesn't matter. But I'm saying there is an event, a mass exodus of people out of this earth. Look at me. Can I tell you something? When that event happens, the earth is going to witness the greatest catastrophe. Think about a, a man driving people in a luxurious bus and he disappears. The danger is those in the bus will not die. Yeah. Those who are laughing, keep laughing. Can I tell you something? 
the Bible will become a bestseller instantly after the rapture. It will no longer be a subject of devotion. It will be the only trusted roadmap into what is next. Philosophers and historians will look for the Bible. My Bible will be there. I will drop it for whoever thinks we are joking. Because we will be with the Word Himself, the author. Hallelujah. Take this Christianity thing very seriously. When we were very, very small, those who got us saved, let me tell you, they did, they did not work miracles, but they had a depth of conviction as far as salvation and eternal reality is concerned. But right now, what we have in church is that people are pressed to the power dimension. We are working miracles. We have prosperity. Many pastors, many bishops, many people do not even know the prophetic destiny of the church after this life. All they know is where they will buy land for church again, or where they will do this, or where they will do that. But they do what will happen? God will punish you as a man of God if congregations keep coming to you and you are not honest enough to tell them about their eternal destiny. I have never, I have almost maybe there are very few conferences where they talk about the reality of the eternal destiny look at the way people live on earth amassing all kinds of things when you think of eternity you will see the folly of mankind jesus adumbrated it in the story of the rich fool it was not money that made him a fool it was his mindset that he did not have eternity in view he gathered all he had and found security in it and said my soul ah not my body Prosperity does not touch the soul. He said, my soul, let this money secure you. And he said, you are a fool. I will prove to you that money is only relevant in this realm. Tonight, your soul will be demanded. There are many people who have sat down concentrating on money, on church growth, and different aspects of the faith. And they just died unprepared. And many of them today are in hell fire. Are you hearing me now? Nobody can plead. There are judges in hell. So who will plead for you? If you die without the Lord Jesus Christ, nobody will advocate for you. You are going to hell. Take this seriously. Can I tell you something? Some of the people who are in hell had these kind of messages. They didn't know it was going to be a serious issue. They didn't know they were going to die very soon. While it is true that we advocate for longevity, not so that we will just sit down wasting our life on the loss of this life but we have a lot of things to do for the kingdom he said i shall not die but not live to raise money live to declare that means if you are not declaring you are not permitted to live are you getting me please koinonia take serious what i'm saying because there are people in hell today as I speak to you from hell, they are hearing this message and wondering. Look at the rich man. Jesus has given us a window. Look at the rich man. While he was in, in hell, he thought his brothers still behaving foolish like him. And he begged Abraham. He said, Abraham, please, I love my family so much. Can you please send Lazarus? to come from the dead and maybe when they see him from the dead they will believe him and jesus made a statement that is still relevant today he said whether he comes from the dead let me tell you they won't believe him because there is something called the deceitfulness of riches the deceitfulness of this life i see the way many people sit down somebody can even look at you and say i will eliminate you look at a foolish person you were born by a woman a seed fertilized your mother to give birth to you now you have such an audacity to believe the life of another man is in your hands because of political power because of whatever can i tell you something every soul in this earth is subject to the voice 
of God and when he makes demand of you he will not give you room to package everything you will leave at once are you listening to me this is a very very important message tonight there is an event called the rapture a day will come I don't know if I will see you but I guarantee you if you make it you will see me because I'm taking my life seriously the Bible says Paul speaking they let it not be that after I have preached I myself all this apostle thing you do only ends in this realm oh. no demon has called one person apostle are you getting what I'm saying you will not carry your parish to hell or to heaven you will not carry your money whatever you have you won't carry your certificates there's no need never allow westernization and education and social orientation to preach you out of this truth our fathers died the missionaries that came to this country died with this one single message they did not tap into the area of divine health and malaria killed them but at least they died in christ they are resting at the bottom of god today but there are many erroneous teachings many ministers camping around some devilish teachings teaching people that this life they will remain forever here at this stage and that there is no rapture oh there is my bible tells me there is i just read it for you jesus is returning are you listening to me his feet will not touch the earth those who have been dead in christ they will arise and we who are alive we will meet with them listen please when we meet with them what will happen we will be caught up in the air and we will return watch this the moment that happens then there will now be an unleashing of the man of sin the one who we now call the antichrist hello planet earth there is the antichrist he is not just a system he is also an entity Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know why the Antichrist ministry will be celebrated? Because the chaos that will happen to the earth after the rapture, it will confuse journalists, it will confuse everyone, and then he will come in and attempt to stabilize the world. Right now, there is a move. The whole move of the world is to bring the entire earth right now into a one world system and this is the rebuilding of the tower of babel these are already the structures of the antichrist look at facebook something if i slap sex right now in 10 minutes all over the world the information can go viral welcome these are the machineries that the antichrist will make use of they are not demonic machineries who will use them for the kingdom and check out and leave it for whoever cares about them i don't know what we will do with the oil of nigeria that we are fighting on when we all depart i don't know if you will sit down inside the oil mine and drink the oil by yourself there are some of you if if it's your your quest for marriage that will take you to hell you don't want to hear anything about god if the teaching is not on how to force your husband to come into your life you are not ready i cannot wait here is my life here is my life i want to give i want to give in serving my fellow man doing the will of god here is my life here is my life here is my life i rather you call me a failure from earth perspective i rather have a ministry where these are all my members and i'm sure every one of them is going to heaven 
than to have a crowd of people. There are many congregations in Nigeria that are on the highway to hell. Altar call. There are churches that the last time an altar call was made was more than one year. If they make altar call, it's for sowing. Many people receive miracles. They come and testify. I was healed, but they are going to hell. I was blessed, but I was going to hell. They prophesied to me, and I got the miracle job. The miracle baby came. You and the baby. Well, babies are not in hell. I'll talk about that. There are no babies in hell. There are small children, but no babies in hell. I will tell you that when we talk about the assurance of salvation. I want to ask you a question right now. Is your name in the book of life? Please look up. I'm asking you a very serious question. I'm not asking your neighbor. Is your name in the book of life? I've had another teaching. There's no book of life. What is all this? This Bible is clear. God gave people wisdom to interpret it in English to help us. What is it about the book of life that you don't understand? The Bible says books were opened. I read it last week. It said, and then another book was opened. And it was called the book of life. It said, whoever's name, whether you are a preacher with Rema, if your name is not found in the book of life, the Bible says you will be cast into the lake of fire. Please take it seriously. That you bear the title apostle and prophet does not take your name to the book of life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That you can quote Genesis to Revelation does not put your name in the book of life. Please take what I'm saying seriously. The rapture will happen. It will happen. Even evangelists now, hear the nonsense they teach on crusade grounds. They gather people and instead of last citizen and am I need to enter very well so that those I don't mean condemnation I mean conviction in the days of D.L. Moody let me tell you something when they preached the power of conviction that left people were caught up and they saw visions of hell at once and they returned they held their seats and they were shivering, waiting for the time of altar call. But right now, when we make altar calls, the people are even angry. The pastor keeps begging because he's embarrassed. He's just saying, somebody come. The Spirit of God is still telling me there's somebody. And you are looking at the person. They are saying, alright, if you feel you just want a better life, you just things are not working, then somebody drowsily comes out as if you are doing the pastor a favor. This night, if I make altar call, those of you who are outside, just see it as a relay race. As soon as I make the altar call, leave your friend and run and just come and stand here. Because this is about your life. I don't ask people to close their eyes when I'm making altar calls. I'm not saying if, if you think you can make it. I think I have not found a scriptural reason to back it. There is no reason to ask somebody to close. It's like I say, close your eyes, I want to drink water. Or close your eyes, I, I want to open my Bible. Why should I close your eyes? Because you are coming. So I will not know you are going to heaven. If you don't go, I will not see you there. Once I don't see you there, I already know that you didn't make it. There are many Bible study teachers who are going to hell. There are many follow-up committee chairmen who are on their way to hell. They just gave them church appointment. They will finish drinking beer and do everything until I come. Uh, according to the manual of this church, right now, now that you are in Christ, desire the pure milk of the word, blah, 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 blah. And while you are talking, this person has never given his life to Christ. It's just that he has stayed so long and he has caused so much trouble in the church. During the board meeting, they said, just give him. Give him. Let's rest. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. This night, just forget about your titles. 
forget about your ministry forget about the fact that you are married forget about the fact that you are working right now just let everything that is earthbound depart from you for a few minutes and see how empty your life is without Jesus Christ I can do nothing without you there's no light to me so I need you in my life today this is one of the biggest deception in the body of Christ right now there are even people that they pronounce salvation on because of the good deeds they have done to church look at me i will tell you where this error came from remember jesus said whosoever sins you forgive is forgiven remember he said that to his disciples now a lot of men of god or people believe they have the exclusive right to come and tell you I set you free whether you feel the remorse of sin or not whether you are ready to get born again or not pastor I was strolling by a cash room and I thought that this was suffering let me alleviate it and I bought you a home and you say you will make heaven no it's not a prophecy there is a condition I cannot prophesy the making of heaven to you are you getting what I'm saying many devilish teachings in the body of christ you release people to go to heaven or release them to go to hell by a prophetic pronunciation with no activity on their part you see this is why our altar calls don't last the people do not see a need to come out hallelujah before the people come out we put handkerchiefs here then we put tea or we put something and they just come out and there are counselors waiting with handkerchiefs to embrace you these people are pressured to life they are not making a sincere decision for jesus christ while they make it just okay take the tea and there is a, a little rehab room in the church where you sit down and explain to us all your sorrows i'm not saying don't care for people they say my husband left me he didn't leave any money for the children and they say oh lord strengthen them help them through life may you grant grace and may we all meet in heaven let me tell you that is a recitation it doesn't make any no theory it does not mean anything some of you have convinced yourself that you are born again after this night you will know that you are not born again you see the reason why jesus said not all of you should presume to be teachers because your judgment will be heavier if you deceive the people that they are saved when they are not saved their yoke will be upon your head see let me tell you listen i'm a young man you think i like shouting like this you think i i, I would have come to teach you about prosperity or dimensions of the anointing and have everybody rejoice some of you are angry because i'm saying this thing now but the problem is you cannot take me to heaven so why should i let your face stop me from preaching the truth god gave me an anointing i opened my big mouth and i said god use me god said that you mean it say yes use me now he has given me the anointing if i sit and say i don't want to offend Aaron, so let's just say there are many ways to god really the, the, the it just depends on how fast you get here jesus said i am the way everybody said the way men of god are now teaching that there are many ways really heaven is not the road to abuja you can follow directly through zaria kaduna you can follow through katia there are many ways to get there but when it comes to your eternal salvation can i tell you something whether you are in hawaii or dubai or kuwait or zaria the principle of salvation is the same if jesus is not in your heart i guarantee you you are going to help fire number three let's hurry up 
the third great deception that has come upon the body of Christ now this is where I want to center on for a while is perverted encounters of quote heaven and hell you get my point put a small what do they call it now just put it there perverted encounters perverted encounters of heaven and hell Matthew 24 24 while you open it just pray in tongues I'm about to say something that I believe is going to liberate the body of Christ right now Are you there? Matthew 24. Verse 23. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs, take note, and wonders, in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive even the very elect 25 behold i have told you before verse 26 wherefore if they shall say unto you behold he is in the desert go not forth behold he is in the secret chambers believe it not look up please now in the early 70s because of the renaissance that began to happen to the body of christ there were several revivals that started breaking out around europe and then america certain people because of their passion and their quest for god listen to me they were granted certain spiritual encounters now this had happened at various levels in the church age we see that paul had an encounter is that true there, there, there is a record in scripture i think let me start by saying this it is not unscriptural to have a spiritual visionary experience the bible says in the latter days joel 2 i shall pour my spirit upon all flesh he said and what your sons and daughters shall prophesy your young men will see visions not a sister visions very serious spiritual activities that are about to be unfolded and then jesus said when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth and he will show you that means you will see are you following me jeremiah 33 verse 3 says call on to me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things all through scripture abraham had supernatural encounters moses are you following me now had a supernatural encounter daniel you list all of them they had dramatic supernatural encounters isaiah ezekiel all of these people so it's okay to have spiritual encounters zechariah a high priest that was ministering that year had the angel appear to him so the encounters of jesus hell and heaven is not against the scope of scripture are you getting me now and so several people were granted access and i'll tell you why god did this listen the bible says in ezekiel 18 there's no time it says 
the wages of sin. He said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Is that true? And that the wages of sin is death. And then the Bible says that, paraphrasing now, the prophet speaking, he said, is it God's desire that a sinner should perish and that he will not return and be delivered? So, God's desperation for the salvation of mankind, God saw the degree of perversion and he saw that whatever needs to be done to help man understand the reality of his eternal destiny are you listening to me and then out of that compassion god began to call certain people into these experiences he appeared to them he showed them heaven he showed them hell they saw their loved ones so that they will come back with powerful messages now listen when this started those who were caught up were not even asking jesus that they wanted to go to heaven are you getting me now back in the 70s he appeared to them and he categorically told them the reason why he appeared to them and he took some of these people to heaven they saw the glories of heaven they saw the angelic they saw a lot of things and then he took them to hell some of them saw their loved ones they saw the different chambers of hell and the they had the opportunity to talk with certain people is that true they came back to this physical realm and you could see the effect on their physical bodies for some of them when they came back they stopped whatever they were doing it took them years to recover because of the the reality of the imprint of what happened to them praise the lord and you can see that their encounter yielded fruit because they were going around evangelizing and teaching people and everything that they taught was not just based on the experience it was based on the word supported by those experiences listen when this strategy started becoming effective from the 80s down to the late 90s Satan started perverting it with what I call false spiritual experiences. What did I say? False spiritual experiences. Certain people started having beings that were superhumans. Are you listening to me? Appear to them and then started bringing messages for them. Started taking them to astral realms taking them to certain planes that were not pure heaven but because the realm of the spirit is a vast realm are you getting me now some of these people had encounters and they came back with so-called experiences from jesus from hell from planes and you can see that the messages that they brought only ended up bringing fear and condemnation not conviction to the body of christ are you getting me to a point that even those who were born again were now doubting the validity of their salvation they started coming with ridiculous conditions that no human being can fulfill to meet heaven are you getting what i'm saying the devil started mixing these things and i will show you that this is consistent with satan's character the bible says that jesus planted wheat and then in the night what happened satan quietly came and planted tears are you seeing that is scriptural and when the fine dressers came and saw it they said master let's block it and he said no 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 leave it because in in the bid to correct it you may injure the experiences that are true let them grow let the experience mature then you can now start filtering it Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name Emmanuel, when you come again Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come. 
I happen to stumble across a number of these great articles. One of it disturbed me. It was somebody who was not a believer. And he seemingly died and went to hell. And when he got to hell, the escorts that took him to hell, listen to me, started listing almost all the men of God that have labored for the kingdom and died. I, I don't want to begin to mention names, but let your mind go wild. The ma anybody you know that church is has spoken, he said they saw them in hell and that in hell they began to tell him the names of other preachers who were here in heaven. I mean in the earth realm who are also going to hell. And the person brought the article with a loud cry and they began to write books and publish it around. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to tell you a few things that some people have come back with that they said made people to go to hell. I'll just list them at random. Hallelujah. A lot of people have come back from hell and heaven and said when they went to heaven, Jesus told them, all the ladies wearing trousers are going to hell. All the people who are not covering their hair are going to hell. All the brothers with plenty hair going to hell. All those on jeans going to hell. Anybody that wears a watch that is expensive like this, you are going to hell. Those who do not bring offering in church, going to hell. If you look at a sister and just say, ah, this lady is beautiful. Please don't laugh. I'm not mocking those people. I'm trying to communicate something serious here. Are you following me now? If you have a beautiful church with a nice pulpit and you are organized, it's a sign that God is not with you. If you are a man of God and you have a crowd, there is every probability you are going to hell. If you are rich and you are a millionaire, you are going to hell. So, they came with, if you are wearing bangles, if you wear any nice earring, you are going to hell. If you use cream or a nice perfume, this is a sign you are not serious with the agenda of God. You are going to hell. So, different, listen please. Don't, I know that we come from different churches. I'm not trying to talk about church at all. Please, get my motive for communicating this. And then, other people said they went to heaven and saw certain people that were not close to anything God. They said they saw them in heaven. They were gloriously seated, adorned with white robes. And now they began to confuse people in the earth realm. Hallelujah. Other people also said that they went to hell and they went to rescue others that were in hell and brought them back to life. I, I'm, I've read some of these things. So these are not hearsay. To the extent that they went to begin to mention the names of men of God. I've not seen my name in any of the books, but who knows? Who knows? Very soon, somebody now will go and say he saw that they have already written it. Just finish what you are doing and come back. Now, now listen. Let me tell you what this will do to a new convert. Let me tell you what it will do to a new convert. If you are looking up to a man of God for spiritual direction, are you getting me? His spiritual life is serving as an encouragement to push you. And they now say that man of God, they have already signed the document that is going to hell. Can I tell you something? I want to prove to you scripturally. It is impossible to conclude about a man in the earth when he is still alive. So that makes that thing a fallacy. Because the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. After this judgment, judgment is not before death. Hallelujah. A lot of people read the Bible as story books. Now, go to bookstores and see every kind of divine revelation book. By any and everybody. Listen, spiritual encounters.
do not renew your mind. Your mind is renewed by the word of God. Vision can be corrupted according to the residue of Babylon that is left in your mind. I can prophesy out of an unrenewed mind and meet the spirit because my mind has not come into alignment. Why will Paul cry and tell the church, my little two children of whom I travel until Christ be formed? He was talking to believers. Listen, let me tell you something. Jeremy, if I am looking for money right now, huh, and God opens my eyes, I can pervert the gift of the Spirit and look at promises account and call your account number and call the name of your father, mother, and brother and tell you, go and withdraw this exact amount. Is that the amount you are? You say it and people will clap. That does not mean God said it. Are you getting me now? If the gift may be correct, it came from God. But because I have not stayed with the Spirit to sustain the character that will back that level of spiritual delivery, I can pervert it and corrupt it. This is how many men of God have entered witchcraft unknowingly because they do not know the word. Their entire life is supported by spiritual experiences. So the day God appears and the day a witch appears, they don't know the difference. They download the same message and keep contradicting themselves. Hallelujah. Perverted encounters. Many people. I know a lady who went to Simming Heaven. I read her article. I think she was an Indian. Indian or one of these ladies. And she said she saw the Holy Spirit as a woman. In fact, Ruach was the name now. She gave it a Hebrew name. And said the Holy Spirit is a woman. She brought, there is the book. There is the book. She wrote it. The way of the master. These guys that do program the way of the master. They were interviewing one gay man that has become a woman. The person said God told him that what he was doing is right. Do you know that there is a gay Bible right now? Oh yes. There is a gay Bible. I've seen it online. People came with revelations. You see what? This this distorted revelation. The Bible says, even if an angel comes with another gospel, he said, let him be accursed. Hallelujah. See, hear me. The Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me. Are you hearing me? I have seen him. I have not gone to heaven. I have not gone to hell. But I've been caught up infinite times to the realm of the spirit. And I can tell you the realm of the spirit has a lot of spiritual planes. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's an atmosphere. Many people, the realms they are going to are astral realms. Everybody say astral realms. They, they, they travel. You hear them say they went to Jupiter. They went to Mars. They went to Pluto. They came with revelation from Pluto. They, they met a deity in Pluto and, 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 and he told them we are coming to the earth. And they come back and start teaching according to that which they have learned. Many things are transporting themselves from many foreign demonic realms and they are finding their way to the body of Christ. Because many people are trying to do the things that they saw. Everybody lift up your Bible. In this jungle of confusion, this is the only correct road map to arrive there. Lift your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, lift what you have. So long as it contains the word of God here. Say, this is my Bible. It's the truth of God's word. It will never change. It will never be edited. It is truth for eternity. In the name of Jesus. Don't sit down with your Bible. Some of us, the last time we read our Bible was over a month ago. All we keep reading, I believe in reading men of God's book. Don't get me wrong. But where books 
replace the book in our quest for Rema can I tell you something I am frankly not impressed when I hear people bring Rema all I want to know is the degree of its agreeableness with truth because the devil can give Rema the Bible says the demons know that Jesus is Lord that means they can give you lecture by God's grace I have conducted countless deliverances for people and sometimes these demon spirits begin to shout and manifest and you hear them quoting scriptures more accurate Kenny is not around I was praying for a lady hear me I was praying for a lady who came over at my place and as soon as I laid my hands on that lady this lady began to manifest and she was shouting shouting just making noise these demons different voices different kinds of demons were talking this lady was quoting scriptures quoting scriptures and the demon would not go later on the spirit started shouting and he said apostle is it not you that taught in koinonia that we should redeem the time why are you wasting your time on me why don't you concentrate on god's people this is the demon spirit now i will carry that revelation are you seeing now i will say i heard from the realm of the spirit that i should not waste my time you, you get the point now this is many people use information from deliverances is that true information that are supplied now listen here is the balance the sincere truth is under god's light everything tells the truth including satan are you getting me under the light of god because the bible says at the mention of his name every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess the truth no one tongue will lie but then the balance is where you stay and begin to receive supply please i'm not criticizing any man of god are you getting my point i'm just communicating to you the truth of god's word if your pastor or you conduct deliverance like that we are learning i believe we are growing as we grow we'll find out more but as far as the word of god shows us at this level i tell you the truth there are not many times that jesus held conversations with demons and where he did that it was to reveal to us certain things like i said if that is a method that has worked for you jesus said whoever is not against us hallelujah whoever is not against us is for us perverted encounters a lot of people have come back with dramatic encounters under certain demonic anointings men of god go for conferences some of them come from covens demonic covens and they seemingly open the heavens over congregations and translate people through magic and astral travels into realms in the spirit and there is a widespread manifestation a man called pastor kim listen to me true story a man called pastor kim i think in one of the asian countries they were having a vigil for 30 days how many days 30 days every night and they were having a lot of genuine spiritual encounters but every time the people had the encounters they went to the pastor the pastor was a pastor indeed not this kind of our pastor they, they, they earned the right to be called spiritual leaders based on their commitment and their sacrifices and hear me this is what happened and it struck me one of the innocent ladies said as they were praying because they had appearances visible appearances that like an angel will appear right now and up to 10 20 people will see the person it is possible while they prayed and fasted the holy ghost spoke to them not to one person to them they had him all of them separate me paul and barnabas so the holy ghost can speak expressly to people from scripture hallelujah then what happened this lady listen in the heat of the prayer they were having experiences the next thing a seeming jesus listen please a seeming jesus appeared to the lady 
and came and said, I am the Lord Jesus. Are you getting me? And when she looked, because the pastor had trained them to discern spirits. Are you seeing a good pastor? Not that he will discern for them and take the glory as a Jew. He has trained the members to discern spirits. He has drilled the church to be strong and manifest as the church indeed. So, while the lady was looking at Jesus, although she was seeing a picture of a seeming Jesus, she said in her spirit, that light, there was no connection. Are you getting me? Deep was not calling on to deep. And the Jesus was telling her, come. I am Jesus, come. And she looked. Immediately, she was comparing his experience with many that have happened in scripture. Because every time he's called the Prince of Peace. So if he appears, there should be the atmosphere that characterizes his presence. But there was turbulence in her spirit. Hallelujah. Immediately she looked at him. And then she said she just looked at him. And she called her pastor. And they looked at him. And the pastor laughed. And she just said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. That seeming Jesus changed immediately into a big ugly beast and disappeared. That would have been another movement founded now. Is that true? He would have called and said, now, the things that I speak unto you, right? I want to show you another dimension of power. Every time you want my power to move, Tell the people to cut wheel four times and touch Pastor William's right hand and all kinds of devilish movements arise from seeming encounters. Hear me, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me, Koinonia. Let me tell you, do not reject supernatural experiences because God is still in the business of doing it. But the Holy Spirit in this day and time must become your best friend. Are you getting me? It is the spirit together with the bride that will tell the world to come. If you never have any spiritual experience in your life, it does not make you less spiritual. Are you getting me? A lot of pastors have taught. Now they rank people in church according to those who see visions. And everybody come with every kind of junk. You go and see time for prayer meetings. And you see everybody. Praise the Lord. I saw something. What did you see, my brother? Tell us. I saw something. I saw my man. I was in a place. And when I was standing there, I saw my man. And then Pastor Jake, you will never say anything wrong against him because you. And then Pastor Jake spoke to him and said, My man, come, I will do this. And you waste people's time telling them lies. A lot of people lie on it. They didn't go anywhere. They didn't see those they said they saw. They said, And the angel told me to do. Let me tell you, hear me. See, if an angel appears right now, the moment I see him, none of you here will be able to stand again. You may not see him, but you will feel his effect. This is how spiritual things work. Let me prove it to you. When Jesus appeared to Saul, they did not see him, but all of them fell at once. The moment spiritual things materialize to one person, there will be an effect. That's why notice when I'm ministering to people and I hold their hands, the moment that I see the demon in the spirit and I say, I see you. You see the person start manifesting. There must be a reaction in this realm. These are spiritual laws. See, ask yourself this night whether you are ready for ministry, my brother. This hurry, some of you are hurrying with all what I'm sharing now. Ask yourself whether you are ready for ministry because some of you right now are just waiting for strike to finish let you just graduate and go and confuse people some of you have gone to one bible college one school of ministry here which is nice and you just believe that by it you are qualified it takes the spirit to qualify a man the bible says he has made us able ministers not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit gives life you must eat this bible if you want to represent christ are you hearing me stay with the word respect men of god honor them but value the bible more than any man including myself 
when I become more important to you than the word of God, I have become an idol. Are you hearing me? As powerful as koinonia messages, let it keep blessing you. But I love God because most of the testimonies that come here are on account of the word, not necessarily just prophecies or, or that okay, this and that happened. The reason why the messages go is because of the word of God that, contain, that is contained in it. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace and discernment to detect wrong experiences. Now very quickly, write. I want to show you how do you test spirit? How do you test experiences? We are going to round up now and we'll pray. I thought we'll be able to finish because I need to teach on assurance of salvation. If we cannot touch that, no problem. We'll touch on it briefly before we enter a new topic next week. If somebody comes right now and says, Joshua Selman, I think you are going to hell. I'm not even going to pray about it. I'll just tell the person, I appreciate your opinion. You can know. Some of you don't know. That's why right now, after this hot message, you have come out for many altar calls. So you even came out last week. If I call now, you will still come out. Which may be necessary. If it is necessary, come out. But the truth is, many people come out of altar calls because of uncertainty. When the message is too hot, you tell yourself prevention is better than cure. <laughs> At least God will not drive me. Let me just come out. So that if I've done it wrongly somewhere, let me do it correctly now. Have you been blessed this night? This should not make you go and start mocking people. And say you what nonsense is your own pastor teaching like this. No. You don't become matured like that. It's not for you to carry the word and say now nah, for you. If this is what you are getting here, I'm sorry for you. Mm -mm. The, the word of God makes you become like Christ. It should project in you the spirit of love and appreciation for the body of Christ. Our ultimate goal is to give you a kingdom mindset, not a koinonia mindset. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. King of kings, Lord of lords. You are faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, You are faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. Hallelujah. How do you test spirits? Number one. Every activity in the kingdom must be consistent with the written word of God. Whether preaching, whether teaching, whether prophesying. Every activity in the kingdom must be consistent with the written word of God. That means if I come to prophesy to you or I teach you and it's not consistent with the universal character of truth, reject it. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. Is that true? It said whether there be tongues, they will pass away. Whether there be prophecies, they will pass away. But the word of the Lord abides forever. So whatever is being done, if I come to prophesy to you right now, whether it's a good prophecy or a bad prophecy, number one, you must judge the character of the man delivering it. Are you following me now? If I am angry with Pastor Femi and God gives me a word for him, do you know that most likely my prophetic word will be perverted? Because it's not flowing from the spirit of love. So even where God has stopped the prophecy, another spirit will take over. 
and I will say something else that God did not say. That's why you must minister in love. Number two, the Bible says, this is how you know the spirit that is of God and the spirit of error. He said, every spirit that does not say Jesus is Lord, every spirit. What scripture is that? First John. Think first John. Let's find it. It's important. We'll find it and then we'll pray. As you open it, begin to pray in tongues. Who has found it? Four verse. Verse one. Thank you. Good Bible students. 4 verse 1, 1 John Some of you have no hope of opening anything You have never ever opened it You don't even know that it's there Take your Bible study serious I, I saw some of you It was everybody open now Some of you say ah, Let me quietly close my Bible I don't even know where First John is Change Change We don't condemn you First John chapter 4 verse 1 Beloved Believe not every spirit But test the spirit Whether they are of God Because many what False prophets Have gone into the world What's the litmus test Verse 2 By this Know ye the spirit of God He said every spirit That confesses that Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Verse 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist of which ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is in the world. Listen. When you are about to test spirits, whatever spirit that does not acknowledge the ministry that Jesus came to do. He said, every spirit that does not confess that Christ is come in the flesh. Why did he come in the flesh? Great is the mystery of godliness. That Christ, God, became flesh. Is that true? He died for people to redeem them. That means any prophetic word that will not ultimately lead to your redemption and to your salvation is a fallacy and is of the devil. There are few judgments in scripture that are called the written judgments. They are written because nobody will pray them away. For instance, nobody will pray sinners out of hellfire. It's a written judgment. Is that true? Nobody will pray the tribulation away. The tribulation is coming. It's a written judgment. Nobody will pray away the doom of Satan. We can come together and say Satan has caused too much problem in the world. Let's pray. Let God have mercy on him and so that we will rest. No. It's a written judgment. Psalms 149 talks about the written judgment. But as long as a human being, listen, listen please. If I am a man of God today and I walk to Mike and I say, Mike, your case, there's no hope again. Are you getting me? You, you are going to hell. There is no case. This is a perversion. It's not the spirit of God. Because there is hope for the living. He who is just so long as you are alive. Are you getting me? The condition, listen please. There is still a condition for you to be alive. And it will be a hopeless condition. Let me tell you that. It is called when you have a reprobate mind. The Bible says a time came when God himself was weary. And it repented God that he made men. Is that true? The Bible begins to talk of certain people who, whose conscience has been seared with hot iron. There are people today that even if Jesus Christ walks in Zaria for 100 days physically, they will look at him and say, Jesus, yeah, where from again? I thought you came here yesterday, but they will not repent. 
Because Jesus walked for 33 years. They saw him. Some even escorted him and watched at the cross. They still died and went to hell. They were two sinners by his left and his right. Is that true? One of the sinners went to hell. One of the sinners went with him in paradise. You are the Spirit of God. I feel your touch in my life. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'll give you three points. What did I say? The first point is testing spirits. It must be consistent with the universal character of the Word of God. Listen. Because of our personality differences as preachers and the vessels of delivering the word of God, you can see a man of God who is very quiet. There are some of you that a man of God is quiet does not make him genuine. It's just his personality. There are other people like me who can be talkative. Blah, 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 blah. I say, this guy is talking too much. Like, like this is not of God. If it's of God, he will be quiet. No. You don't judge spiritual things by people's personality. Elijah was a temperous person. Are you getting me? He called down fire at once. He didn't even waste time. There were other emotional prophets like Jeremiah who were always crying. Is that true? They were called weeping prophets. It was him that wrote lamentations. He was lamenting, lamenting. There were certain disciples that were as hard as a rock. Nothing moved them. But there were others who were soft. One of them was John the Beloved. There were some who were just less than fair. All these other names in the Bible that the Bible doesn't record. They were dear but they were not dear. They were just, let's go out fishing. I'm going. Come follow me. They still came. You know, just, there are some Christians like that. So personalities differ. <laughs> There's a man of God, every time I watch on TV, I almost laugh. That guy can speak almost 120 words per minute. I've never... The day he was talking with his wife, I didn't know it was introduction. Is that also... I said, you have introduced your wife. But he's a very sound man of God. Very sound man of God. There are others who take one hour. You need to fight sleep and open your eyes like this. Open your eyes. Before you understand. But regardless of how it is, discern what they are saying in light of truth. Are you getting me? Number two. No, I'm, 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 we're reviewing. What's the second point? Yes. That does not say Christ has come in the flesh. In other words, every truth of God's word must point men towards redemption. Any kind of redemption. Whether redemption from their predicaments, redemption from ignorance, redemption from eternal loss. God is a redemptive person. Are you following me now? So if I just tell you, I say, Tolu, I see disaster coming to your house. Or I see that somebody in your house wants to kill somebody. That's an incomplete prophecy. Because there is no redemptive aspect of that prophecy. Are you getting me? So I have a right to dump that prophecy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The third one. And I'll round up with this. And I'll do an altar call and we'll pray. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? It must bring three things three things in the lives of people there that's the third point number one it must reveal the love of god it must not bring condemnation and it must bring hope love lack of condemnation and hope see listen god does not condemn but he also does not condone are you getting me now Condemnation is different from conviction. What the Holy Ghost does is conviction. What men do is condemnation. God will not condemn you 
but it does not mean he will allow you if i speak to you right now and you sense that what i'm saying is coming from the heart of love if god shows me for instance that this brother has been sleeping around and i just come and look at him and I just wind my hand. I say, I've been wasting my time in Koinonia here talking. I just give him a dirty slice. I say, come here, come and kneel down here. You know, churches have become paramilitary right now. We humiliate God's people because they sign our membership register. And I give him a dirty slap. I say, so, whose wife have you been sleeping with? Come and stand here. Whose wife have you been sleeping with? This is not the manifestation of the Spirit of Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? If God has revealed to me, assuming for instance, this is your wife and you have been sleeping around, I will apply the wisdom of God's word because the kingdom of God is not in word but in righteousness, peace. That means I will not wreck your family in an attempt to reveal something to you. Are you getting me? I rather call, that's why sometimes you see me talk to I take the mic away because of the sensitive things I'm telling them. I heard of a story of one serious man of God whose wife, a preacher's wife, has been sleeping around in a church. He's a prophet, a true prophet. But this guy, that you mismanage the anointing does not mean you are not genuine. It's just that you are not matured and it can lead to perversion, which is not the character of the spirit. True story happened in Abuja. The man just looked at the pastor's wife and start visiting everything that was happening in the church called her out called some of the brothers the deacons the helpers in the church who are helping the pastor and all the people you see it caused more chaos in the church than redemption there are many men of god that do this this is not the spirit of christ are you getting what i'm saying now that does not mean to condone are you getting me but the Bible says, do not rebuke an elder publicly. There are scriptural guidelines. I would rather call them and say, okay, I want to see you with your wife. Or mama, I want to see you. This is what the Lord is showing me. And I think it's good that you work on this, this and that and that area. Some of you have had the F13 to send text messages to men of God. Hello, sir. The Lord is showing me you are not being serious with your life. You are just pretending. Your days are numbered. I speak as a child of God. Send. You are not matured. You think it's spiritual maturity. Or you hear a hot message like this. You just go and say, Daddy, time has come to stop sleeping with all these women. I will not keep quiet again. If you like, kill me. Send. Your father will beat you and drive you out of the house spiritual things must be approached with wisdom that's why jesus met with the centurion because he was a noble man and they talked one-on-one -on -one. nobody had that case again there are people today i counsel because they are men of god and the status they have sometimes they come they have fallen or done something you will never hear it from my mouth anywhere it must bring love there are many people that cannot go and meet a man of God for counseling because of what they have done. Many people rather go and meet other pastors than meet their men of God because they know if I tell the pastor I did this, the past now this it can be annoying. Let me tell you the truth. You don't know what it means to stand here every week and be lashing it out. Some of you just keep looking like this. As you are looking, your mind is already thinking of the bad things you go and do. So it can be frustrating. However, it is at that point we will see how much of the Spirit of Christ. If you are so full of the Holy Spirit that you are prophesying and it's not leading to love and discipline, something is wrong. The same Holy Spirit who operates in you so strongly should manifest His character too so strongly in you. Is that true? These three litmus tests. Test every word. As you go browsing, when you see revelations, test them. If you don't believe them, don't condemn the man of God. Don't go and write any article against any man of God and quote me. Praise God. Perversion. This one is on rampage. And it must stop. We are going to pray this night. Many of our family members started misbehaving.
the day one prophet came to their house and told them something about seeming heaven and hell they just confused i know i counseled a, a family like that something happened around the family and they brought some devilish teachings to the point that it started affecting their mother rise up on your feet everybody inside and outside please stand on your feet please all of you just close your eyes in one minute inside and outside just close your eyes in one minute i want to talk to you now heaven is real hell is real and jesus is coming soon one day the trumpet will sound and i tell you the truth from my heart there are many people who have not made it right with god some of you are inside this auditorium right now some of you are outside some of you may be men of god next week i'll touch on the conditions for salvation and the assurance of salvation and will answer the question can a man lose his salvation hallelujah but right now you have heard the word of the lord as you're standing outside or inside the holy ghost is speaking to you and saying it's time to make your ways right some of you have never made this decision every time you hear preachers preach it you keep laughing let me tell you something heaven is real jesus is coming soon a day will come this life will pack up some of you have given your heart to the lord but you found yourself backsliding you really derailed from the things of god now is the time to make up your mind i know there are many of you outside some of you were invited you just trolled with your friends the lord wants to give you a new beginning any other thing we teach that is relevant in time is only relevant if your eternal salvation is guaranteed as you are standing hearing my voice in koinonia this night the holy ghost is speaking to you no matter how many times you have come out even if you came out last week and you think what you did was just play i want you to make a decision for jesus christ as the worship team begins to sing all oh, the blood of jesus i want you to leave wherever you are and run and come and kneel down here i'm going to count one to ten hallelujah as i count one to ten do not let the devil stop you the devil wants you to go to hell as i begin to count i want you to rush out right now one two run out there are many of you you are welcome run and come and kneel down run and come and kneel down leave your seat and run three no power will stop you keep coming don't let your friends stop you there is heaven and there is hell come keep coming no matter how far you are keep coming keep coming God bless you. This is your redemption from hell. Five. It was the one of love. Six. Keep coming. There are still more people outside. There are still more people outside. Don't let the devil rob you of this opportunity. Seven. the lord is ministering to me there are still more people outside some of you are afraid of your friends the friends that you came with they will go to heaven and leave you behind i want you to leave your seat right now and come leave your seat and come 
there are a number of you outside the Lord is ministering to me there's nothing to be ashamed of begin to come right now eight leave your seat and begin to come begin to come there's nothing to be ashamed of eight Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let no devil stop you. Keep coming. For the salvation of your soul. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. I salute all of you that took the bold step to come out. I should, in case you are in the crowd and the Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now, you can still run and come and join them. There's no need to be afraid. Nobody condemns you. This is a family. We are genuinely interested in your salvation. Those of you who are here, lift your hands and begin to talk to the Lord with your own words. God brought you out here. Lift your hands. Take it seriously. Begin to talk to the Lord. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Those in the congregation, stretch your hands and pray for them. Stretch your hands and pray for them. A harvest for the kingdom. Because you invited them, they will not go to hell. Look at them crying. Look at people crying genuinely. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. One more time. I believe. I believe. I believe. Bible says, whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Lift your hands high above your head. I'm about to leave you. To make the greatest prayer you will ever make in your life. You have prayed for prosperity. You have prayed for health. But now you will pray the greatest prayer. With every sense of sincerity in your heart, the Lord Jesus is in this place. I'd like you to say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I accept that I'm a sinner. But tonight, I've heard your word. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to live a miserable life on earth. Therefore, I come to you. My Savior. My King. My Lord, I repent of all my sins. I receive cleansing and I receive eternal life into my spirit. From today, I'm a child of God. From today, my name is in the book of life. Wash me with your precious blood. I denounce sin and Satan. 
the power of sin is broken over my life from today forward ever backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted let me pray for you father you have brought these ones by the power of your Holy Spirit they have heard your word tonight and they have made a genuine commitment my God and my King I pray let this be the beginning of a genuine journey into mighty things make them mighty men and women of God in the name of Jesus Christ we receive you into the greatest and the biggest family the biggest family the very family of faith in the name of the Father in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit celebrate God for them we welcome you we welcome you we welcome you hallelujah now Pastor Jake is going to have a meeting with you tomorrow by 5 p.m. Please and please, it's important that we follow you up and guide you. Alright? Just help you to know what it is that you need to do from here. Pastor Jake's the venue. The venue is going to be chapel just by the bookstand. Please make it, if you invited anyone here, please encourage them. Hallelujah so that they will have a meeting with Pastor Jakes will get you filled with the Holy Spirit and will guide you on the foundational truths of the kingdom hallelujah the Lord preserve you now please rise up gloriously follow the ushers they will have your names and your details will contact you and will meet with you Koinonia celebrate them celebrate them we will see them in heaven someday hallelujah hallelujah now listen hallelujah i'm declaring from today until next week thursday a prophetic time of evangelism are you hearing that i'm going to pray for you that the unction of the spirit will come upon you are you hearing me i want you to take many of you you can go in groups you can go individually evangelism in your room in your home if you cannot preach invite them are you getting me throughout this week i will do it everybody don't condemn people don't create a subject of argument there is nothing to argue about you are going to go with the power of the holy ghost we have taught you here as you go you will heal the sick as you go you will cast out devils you will demonstrate the authority of the kingdom i will do that just before we round up right now let me take those who are worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time worshiping with us in koinonia we love you we celebrate you inside and outside no matter how far you are i'd like you to leave your seat and come out quickly we want to bless and speak a word of prophecy god bless you you are welcome god bless you, you are welcome appreciate them appreciate them if this is your first time don't remain behind don't be ashamed outside there are a lot of you you're welcome keep coming keep coming god brought you to bless you god brought you to bless you this is not all some of you are ashamed keep coming we have a blessing for you jesus son of god I believe in you. I believe in you. Thank you so much for coming, every one of you. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. And our goal here is to build people, to bring them into a place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. To teach you the principles of the kingdom so that you will go and be an ambassador. It will represent the government of heaven here in the earth thank you so much for coming we love you we truly appreciate every single one of you hallelujah and we want to pray for you right now listen we are anointed if we bless you you are blessed saints of god stretch your hands as we bless them remember you have the anointing stretch your hands and speak over their lives we bless you with the blessings of the heavens 
we command that you are strengthened we bless you with the spirit of prayer the Lord strengthens you you are mighty upon the earth and you are relevant even in the spirit may the Lord bless you every sickness in your body will curse it right now every oppression of darkness every door that is closed against you we command that you go back and find it open in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah thank you so much for coming once again now I'd like you to just follow the ushers they will have your details and they will welcome you more warmly on our behalf God bless you thank you the Lord bless you just follow the ushers follow the gentleman waving his hands and they will direct you thank you so much Hallelujah.